what is open risk? The whole project came from the from our own or many and also this discussion with many people uh, that there are many many things out there which are really helping in in getting the the risk assessment and, and uh, predicted to toxicology from something which is animal based to something which is better and also more human relevant but but for that you need a lot of tools and these tools are available but very fragmented there is no standard way to, to access data. You have to go to the different data sources to, to download them. And then you, it takes a long time to really put that into workflows. And, and therefore, we said, can we make that easier uh, that we have this? Can we build this infrastructure which gives easy access to tools, which in a standard or harmonized way, which is then also scalable and robust? Yeah, for whom I, I hope or many people from these stakeholder groups are here, researcher, researchers, industrial, but academic as well as industry researchers, risk assessors, regulators, and at one point of time, hopefully also the, the, the general public. And for what I already said, make risk assessment, uh, use of risk assessment tools easier uh, prototyping new services and applications, integrating all the, the accessible, available sources, and in that way, really provide this kind of underlying or general platform where you can more or less do whatever you need to do for risk assessment. Um, how do we do that? The main component is that we are really this case-driven development approach. I think nowadays most of the projects are somehow case study driven, uh, that you pick pick specific areas and, and then concentrate on them, showing that these tools work for them um, and make them more specific, uh, but in general, or still present the general concept. I will talk about that uh, later in more detail. Um, we have this website where, where these kind of studies are also described in more detail. If we can later on go there and, and have more, a better look at that. What we are not doing is developing new tools. You know, what we are concentrating is really on this infrastructure development and then bringing in existing tools, integrating these. And these are coming at the moment mainly from us, uh, but the associated partner program is that or is meant to also bring many, many other people in. Um, we want to go very broad. Uh, we really have these integrated approaches. Uh, we are not limited to anything. We will use in vivo data whenever available, or we will make in vivo data available whenever available. Uh, we will use in, in vitro, in silico, in chemical, whatever is available and what is needed for um, for the task at hand. And this is why we are here. Uh, we want to include all stakeholders at a very early, early stage that we see, okay, is that reasonable what we are doing? Is that useful? And how can we improve? Um, this is just a very quick introduction to our case study driven approach. What we did is, is look at, at risk assessment frameworks and then try to generate from that um, a set of, at the moment, seven case studies, which I will describe in detail. Um, but that you already know that we have this um, really end user or the, the, the the driving force is coming from these case studies, which are real uh, world um, tasks in risk assessment. Um, how do we do that? And also that is then what, what Tim will describe in more details. Everything what we are doing is based on REST services, web services, or yeah, more or less uh, services which can be access through the internet, through these harmonized APIs. Um, on top of that, we built a semantic interoperability layer, which is 
there to, to make tools easier to understand for a human being, but also for a computer. Um, all these services we have here are then containerized and deployed onto these virtual inf infrastructures, research infrastructures. And this is perhaps something which is new for, for, for most of you, is that we don't provide that as services which are somewhere hosted in the internet, but the goal is that you select which services you want to have, bring them in-house in, into your own virtual research infrastructure environment, and then you can run it there. Um, the advantage is, one of the advantages with this approach is that you, for example, don't have to, to send out any confidential information. Everything will stay in-house. and But you can still get the public sources into the, your work for, uh, workflow uh, from outside. Um, this is just a picture of, uh, of describing this. Yeah, let me have on the top here. Uh, we have, I hope you see my mouse. Um, you have the services which we provide with the APIs. Then there are different ways to access these, um, these uh, services um, depending on your um, knowledge. Yeah, if, you, if you are more computer affine, then, then you can use um, Python scripts, R scripts, or any other computational computer language to access that. Or um, you can also then use that in workflow managers, and or we can design specific web pages, which then provide these services. Yeah, but the, the main way is really that um, we have the standard way to doing that. <clears throat> and in that way, we can provide these services, which can then be combined and, and um, to, to things which are better than each individual tool. These are the services we are planning, or part of the services we are planning to integrate, but that is just <laughs> what we are doing now. Uh, the case studies will definitely show uh, where more additional needs are, and uh, the um, the partner program as well as the implementation challenge will then also bring different tools from other uh, third party in here. Um, this I already mentioned that the idea is not to have that in different different web services which are run by by the service provider, but that you get these services all together into this local or more or less local um, uh, research infrastructures which might be just on your home computer, on your laptop, or your, your um, workstations, or they can be like we have our reference instance in a public cloud where all of you can already access it, or if you need more resources, this can be deployed also in a larger um, 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 data center or high performance computing center. This is our reference infrastructure, which we will show, uh, where we have already a couple of, of services uh, implemented, which we will demo today. Um, you will get the slides, and or when you go to our website, you will also directly find the link to this reference infrastructure. It is meant for testing. Uh, it's not something where really huge amount of, of users with, with very high computational demands can work on that, but it, it it is a way to already see the features, do small computations, and, and in that way um, understand if that is something which is worth deploying somewhere else where that really be high or the computation can be done on a regular basis. Um, OK, this is just going back. We are API based. Therefore, uh, there are more or less the two, two ways to access it. If you really want to play around with tools, it's probably the best way to, to use directly the APIs because you can, can then nicely design the workflows you want to do. On the other side, we definitely also have these this user, graphical user interfaces where the access is much easier. Um, if you start to use a tool, 
you can first try it out what the, the normal way to use them is, uh, get there a little bit of a feeling what this service can do. And then when you optimize it, then you can still go back to the APIs and uh, the swagger definitions of these APIs and explore in that way the full functionality of this service. Um, the way to do these combinations are workflows. This is just something I will show later um, with Jupyter notebooks, which are more or less interfaces to, to Perlscript or I, uh, Python, uh, Python scripts or R scripts. Or what we are also doing, and to uh, demo that later, we also have this relative or very much simpler way to access things by a workflow manager, which can be where these tools, the services can be combined by just clicking and, and putting that onto um, a dashboard in a similar way than R, uh, than Lime works, for example, but in a more chemical toxicology, toxicology based uh, environment, yeah, because it is specifically designed for solving toxicology, chemical, biological problems, and not this general approach from them. But more on that from Tim. 